All right, this print is 14 individual items. They're all identical. There's 14 of them. And this is the skirt portion of the print. This is the very beginning showing the skirt all the way around. They're triangular shaped pieces. You can see the skirt all the way around. And now it's printing the print itself, the actual model itself. You can see it right there in the middle. Okay. So basically this shows the user that everything is going along as it's supposed to, as expected. Um, you see a good good line of filament all the way around. You hear no clicking, popping, or, or clunking from the extruder, so the leveling is good. There's The nozzle is at, at the perfect level above the bed. Uh, you don't want the nozzle touching the bed because then the filament won't have any space to be pushed out. And if that happens, then the stepper motor here starts to overstress starts popping and clicking and clunking and all that so you don't want that uh, because you don't want it skipping steps because it can't force out filament out the nozzle so when you level the bed be sure when you use the paper feeler gauge that you do it correctly the first time and then you don't have to deal with it it becomes habit so there we go it's starting to print great now let's go to tour of the printer you can see there for yourself those are the springs check that out those are the springs that came with the printer no need to change it to anything else other than the originals that came with it. And there's your proof right there. This printer is operating right now with those springs in place. There's four of them. You can see it's operating right now with the standard no, uh, no frills hot end. The, the only purpose of the hot end is to deliver filament to the table. So you have your table. This is your print surface. You've got the nozzle right there underneath. You've got the heat block with a heat sink, keeping the heat block and the heat sink cool, right? This fan keeps that heat sink cool so that the filament going through the Bowden tube doesn't start to get soft because then it'll mushroom out and cause a clog. So you've got to be sure your fan is properly functioning to get the proper airflow to that heat sink that's right here. The nozzle heats the filament at that point and in this particular case, it's 210 on the nozzle. Uh, but check this out. Ah, check that out. Check for yourself. You don't even have to take my word for it. Right there. Non-heated bed. Not required. Uh, I never heat the bed, never have heated the bed. Especially when I'm doing it in this fashion, which I do all the time. Uh, since I do print all the time, and if I have failures at any given uh, moment, it, it, time is money. I, I can't afford to have failures. Uh, you can see here for yourself, there's no no brim, no raft, no messy-ass glue stick. Of course, you would see that. You would see the messy glue stick all over the place. Uh, of course, you don't see that here. You never will. It's just not required. And when I say not required, it's just not needed. There you go. It's proof right there. And we'll check back later to see if there's any curling of the, of the print at all. And... Um, Pretty sure, based on my past experience, that, that uh, won't be an issue. We see again the Bowden tube. That that's how the filament gets from a stationary extruder. This is stationary. How does the filament get from here to a moving head? It's moving all the time. How do you? How does filament get there? Through the Bowden delivery system. This is the Bowden tube. Filament is being pushed down into the print head. That's how it works. Then it gets soft right down here to the proper temperature and gets troweled down to the table. It's literally troweling it down to the table as it's supposed to, as it's designed to do. Uh, I am currently printing silk gold PLA and again the filament temperature is at 210. Non-heated bed, there is no heat here, no heat uh, to, to force uh, adhesion or um, or, when, or actually to force warping because heat might affect the bed itself because you're heating the bed. You don't want to have any extra heat that would cause possible that aluminum plate under here to warp. You don't want that. And then they say, well, that's what the electronic gizmo is here to, to compensate for the warping. Oh my God. If you start out with a flat surface that's known to be flat all the way around, then that electronic gizmo is useless because it won't find any high or low level or low uh, spaces 
for the nozzle to travel over because it starts out flat and it'll stay flat because I'm not heating the bed. You never have to heat the bed. Okay, so heating and cooling is old school. It's uh, not required. All right, that's past. Extruder, check that out. Plastic extruder. The body of the extruder will function as it's supposed to every time. If that arm or lever there ever has an issue, it's like three bucks, five minutes, and you're back to printing. You don't have to change it to an aftermarket metal extruder just because of that one measly thing. So you'll have more problems with the metal extruder than this one will ever have, ever. Because it, it's, not, it's not the same. And thank goodness it's not. All right. We have our filament here hanging on the side. And as you can see, I'm not redirecting the fi filament flow. I'm not redirecting it with arms and levers and gadgets and pulleys and whatever the hell else. I just mount it here. The filament comes out here and it's virtually a straight shot. Right there, you can see it for yourself. Straight shot into the extruder. So that way there's no wear and tear on the hole that that goes through. You don't want to wear the hole bigger because your filament starts from way up here. You know, to get all the way down here. And you don't have to have an arm or lever or any kind of thing that's sticking out to uh, redirect it. You don't need all that. Just, again, not required. Okay. So there we are. So let's look at it again. Non-heated bed. Never will heat the bed. Never need to heat the bed. Okay, no messy ass glue stick, no raft, no brim, just as you see it. Flat surface, known to be flat. It's removable and replaceable. Okay, that's how it works. Okay, springs, check it out. Those are the original springs that came with the printer because they work. There's no issue with tramming, leveling, or anything else because I use this. I use this old school tramming tool. It's a piece of paper and I'm using it for the thickness of the paper and the fact I don't have to go out and buy a feeler gauge for just that one purpose. This is a two inch strip of six inch, uh, two by six inch uh, paper strip to tram the bed. Then I start printing. I don't have to do any after, you know, uh, test my, my tramming with uh, all this lines and squares and circles and crap that have to be taken off the bed in order to start a print. I mean, again, it's ridiculous to do all that test just to have to disrupt your level because you have to remove all that crap. So just trust your skill, tram the bed, start your print. ABC123, that's all this is about. ABC123. Simple. I mean, all I have to worry about is what to print next. Alright, happy printing.